Hello and welcome to a new game from the Premier Division. This is game 22 and Lila is playing against Komodo MCTS, which is uh, using Komodo's evaluation component, but his um, search algorithm is closer to Lila's search algorithm than Komodo's. So it's a kind of a different animal, but still a dragon, so pretty strong. And they played a Slav defense with c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, d4, d5. And here we have the quiet variation of the Slav with e3. White wants a quiet and calm game. If black takes on c4, then he wants to be ready to recapture with the bishop. And he doesn't want to give up a pawn for uh, some other compensation. So the quiet variation. And now the game continues with a6 and bishop d3. In some variations of the Slav, as soon as this bishop moves, black wants to take here on c4 and force the bishop to move again by recapturing the pawn. And now black's idea is to attack this uh, bishop even more and then eventually develop this bishop to b7. Another idea is to develop this bishop to g4 not necessarily only to pin this knight, but also to swing this bishop back to g6 and try to exchange it for white's best minor piece, this bishop on d3. Both, uh, both ideas are good. Black has to be careful not to combine them because that doesn't work. If uh, black takes here and the bishop recaptures, then now bishop g4 is not that great because now white has this sack on f7. And after king takes, there's 95 check, winning back the piece. And after king g8, knight takes, knight takes, and queen takes. Black is in huge trouble. Uh, first of all, white won a pawn, but even more importantly, this king now can't castle. This rook is stuck. Black also has an isolated pawn on e7. And to top it all, white threatening mate in one with queen e6. So don't do this with black. So in this one, we have bishop g4 without taking here, obviously. And now the game continued with knight d2, knight d7, and now queen c2, e6. And they both have to solve the dark squared bishop's uh, development. Komodo MCTS obviously wants to play bishop d6, and Lila wants to play bishop b2. Now that this pawn is in the way, the bishop has to go to b2. So b3 was played. And now we have bishop d6. And this is now the end of the book. Bishop d6 is, is a logical move. It's much better than bishop e7. Now since this bishop is not even threatening to pin this knight, there's little point to, to develop this bishop to e7. Much better is to put it on this aggressive uh, d6 square where it overlooks the white king side. And it's also influencing this e5 square, which is very important. The knight wants to jump here in many cases. The game now continued with castles and bishop h5. And now after bishop b2, we reached an important position here. Bishop g6 immediately trying to exchange this bishop is a very good idea. And it's the most popular choice in this position among grandmasters. But other moves have been played, for example, queen b8. This is another move which allows the bishop of the c5 to retreat to c7 and maintain itself on this diagonal. And with that, black is preventing white from jumping to e5 with the knight. Knight e5 now would lose a pawn since black is guarding the e5 square three times. So that's not possible. In the other game, in the reverse game, Lila played queen e7, which is also allowing this bishop to drop back to c7, but it's not guarding the e5 square, so that this knight can jump right in. And this is exactly what happened in the other game where Komodo MCTS was white. Lila managed to win that game, actually, and I will review that game very, very soon. But in this game, instead of uh, bishop g6, queen b8 or queen e7, we have queen c7, which overlooks the e5 square, but now after c5, this bishop has to drop back to e7. And this is, is not a tragedy. 
because uh, black will eventually will try to attack white center and he can do it with e5 or b6 and if b6 comes then maybe putting pressure on the c5 square is actually beneficial lila however thought that dropping this bishop back to c7 was a better idea she now wants to play b4 to defend the pawn, but before that she tossed in g3 and she wanted to continue now with b4 but Komodo mcts stopped that with a5 and now we have a3 to allow b4 castles b4 bishop g6 lila now took out the bishop and she played here bishop c3 attacking the a5 pawn and forcing the matters here little komodo now took the pawn and he played rook b8 he wants to play b6 at some point so and after these pawns are cleared this rook now would be in a good position to try to get into white's position the game continued with king g2 and now after knight e8 this knight wants to to come to b5 which is a very good square but now after this knight is leaving the king side lila thought that maybe a king side attack is in order and she played here rook b1 avoiding the tension between those, these rooks avoiding the exchange but this now gives up the a5 to black and here now after queen c8 which makes room for the knight she played h4 starting the attack she wants to play h5 at some point and open the h5 we now have knight c7 and rook h1 there's no doubt that lila wants to open the h5 knight b5 rook e1 this knight was uh, threatening a fork on a3 so the rook had to move but Lila wants to play e4 anyway, so the rook is in a good position to support that. We still have knight a3, queen c1, knight back to b5, and now e4. Playing h5 here is a bit premature, because black has g5, keeping the h5 closed. And if h6, then g6, and so on. Black is fine here. So <clears throat> Lila first played e4 here, and if now black takes, then after knight e4, white has a good control over the g5 square and now h5 would be much much stronger however after e4 uh, little komodo didn't took on e4 he played queen f8 and now after queen c2 he attacked the queen again but this time the queen went to d3 and at this point lila thinks that this is now starting to turn into white's favor she evaluates this at one at uh, plus 1.6 the game now continued with knight back to b5 but now came bishop b2 and after knight c7 trying to um, to take back here uh, with the knight if white takes on, on d5 we have bishop c1 eyeing the g5 square b6 finally little komodo attacks white center we have e5 though closing down the center and now after knight a6 attacking this pawn lila defended bishop a3 knight went back the bishop went back to c1 and here instead of repeating little komodo continued with rook a4 which attacks this pawn on b4 we now have knight g5 and lila is preparing to bring this other knight to f3 and slowly slowly she's gathering her pieces to the king side now in this position f6 doesn't work because this pawn can take and then white can take on e6 the, the rook is defending the knight also trying to take this knight is not so great because the pawn can recapture and then this plan with rook h4 rook h1 and mate on h8 is very very strong if the rook takes on b4 then uh, black wins a pawn but his rooks now are not coordinated well after c takes on b6 and rook takes white can play knight f3 and the rooks are not in position to attack d4 d4 and f2 are white's weakest points and black is not in position to attack them so uh, in the game instead of rook takes on b4 we had pawn takes and now after b takes on c5 we have rook b4 and now we can see that komodo mcts is putting a lot of pressure now on d4 forcing knight f3 and here now h5 is finally a big threat for white there's no g5 to dodge it 
and the DH file opens up uh, with uh, huge mating threats. So black needs to be careful. For example, if the knight goes to b5 to attack this pawn, intending to take it with the knight, then h5 could come. And if the knight takes on d4, then h takes on g6 is very, very strong. For example, if the knight would take on f3, this would be a mate in three. Pause the video if you'd like to find it yourself. Well, the sequence starts with g takes on f7. Obviously, this is the first move, easy to find. But after the queen takes back the pawn, how do you continue? Because uh, queen h7 and king f8, now it's not mating one. This queen can dodge it. So how do you mate in two from this position? The solution is to check on a8 with the rook, force the king to a8, and now queen takes on a7 is a mate. So this was just to illustrate that black needs to be careful. He can't really just go for the attack. He has to defend first. And here in this position, little Komodo actually considered that taking out this knight is best. And he did. And now came h takes on g5. And again, this plan of doubling the rooks and mating on h8 is very, very strong. We have queen a8. <clears throat> making room for this king to hide on e7. Queen e3 though, and now here Lila was expecting a little bit of more resistance with um, 98 controlling the f6 square. As we'll see immediately, the f6 square is crucial in this position. 98 is what she was expecting, but we had queen a6, <clears throat> and here now to queen f4, Lila is absolutely convinced that she's winning this she evaluates this at plus three and actually in this position she's now threatening mating seven it's more like mating three actually but black has a lot of moves to delay the mate so it's a mating seven pause the video again if you would like to see how lila could win from this position with with uh, her move if now she would be on the move the mating sequence starts again with rook a j check, forcing the king to a j, forcing it away from the defense of the f7 pawn. And now after queen takes on f7, we can see that the g8 square is taken away from the king. g7, h6 are also unavailable. So it's easy to see that rook h1 now threatens an unstoppable mating one. However, it's not unstoppable because black has now a couple of resources here to delay the mate with rook d4, obviously, trying to block the check here with the rook. And now rook takes doesn't work because then the other rook takes and there's no mate on the h file. So the knight has to take first. And now again, white threatens mating one with knight g6, double check and mate. So what can black do? Well, he can sack his queen. This saves another move. The king takes. And now again, mating one threatened. So black plays here king a7. So the knight g6 doesn't come with double check. And this allows now him to block again. But after rook h4, white is finally mating. So this is uh, something that computers do quite a lot to delay the, the end of the game. Humans not so much because it just doesn't make sense why the extra suffering you know this is like telling the uh, executioner to chop off all your fingers one by one before he inevitably chops off your head so why the extra suffering doesn't make any sense of course computers don't suffer so for them it's a, it's a good idea to delay the mate even by one move so now after queen f4 Komodo had to defend and he played king f8 trying to run to e7 we now have rook check and after king e7 we can see that the black king doesn't really have squares all these squares are taken away by white pieces and uh, these squares are occupied by black pieces so one more check and the black king is doomed but there aren't many checks available at least the uh, good ones. Queen f6 could be one, but it looks like black can recapture either with the pawn or the knight and uh, black is fine. Or is it? Not so fast, actually, because Lila here did indeed play 
queen f6 check and this is now a completely winning position for white believe it or not black has, has no escape here commodore mcts took with the knight and here lila took back with the e pawn so that e5 is available for the knight and now after g takes and pawn takes king d7 trying to hide with the king doesn't work because black gets made it with knight e5 so the king has to take on f6 but now comes bishop g5 check and the black king again has uh, two places to go to king f5 is the worst one because this mates now in two after rook e5 and king g4 white has either rook h4 mate or knight h2 mate so king f5 not good in the game the king went to g7 and now we have rook h1 again with an unstoppable looking uh, mate in one with rook h7 what can komodo mcts do well not much at this point the game is essentially over but he tried here queen f1 check trying to prolong it and he hopes here that the king will take allowing him a check and then if the king moves away then one of the rooks could be exchanged and there's no mate and if the knight blocks then again rook takes king takes rook check king up and now after one of the rooks are exchanged there's no mate white is completely winning of course but at least there's no mate but in the game after queen f1 check the rook took back and now of course king takes on a8 is not possible pause the video again if you would like to find the winning move here which starts with bishop f6 after king g8 there's rook h1 again mating on h8 so after queen f1 check rook takes we have now rook back to a8 this allowed now black to challenge this rook with this one but after the rooks are exchanged and rook a1 white is a bishop up in exchange for a pawn and he has a, a completely winning position the game continued with knight c7 bishop e3 rook b7 defending the knight in the second rank g4 intending g5 with a complete restraint on black's position so commodore mcts played here g5 himself but this drops a pawn f6 bishop e3 knight b5 g5 pawn takes bishop takes e5 d takes on e5 knight c7 bishop f6 check king g6 and now knight d4 attacking this pawn the rook counter attacks but after knight takes and rook c4 we have knight d7 check king f7 rook a7 knight e6 c6 d4 and after knight f5 check king g6 knight h4 check and king h6 the game was finally ended in lila's favor an interesting game please subscribe like and share and check out some of the other videos thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye